Hey guys, Naisha here from Just an Average Girl, and I'm back with another video that I did so long ago. In fact, it was my very first video talking about what I love most, cartoons. And maybe someday soon, I'll review the raccoons as I have still yet to talk about that show. In the meantime, I hope that you enjoy this review about my favorite orange cat, Heathcliff. I love animation. From the squash and stretch of silly characters to the jaw-dropping, adrenaline-pumping shows that make you want to go out and punch somebody because it's just that good. Here, I'll be taking you back to the shows and movies from my childhood that inspired me to be a writer, an artist, and pushed me to understand the arts of animation. Also, We'll be looking forward to the shows and movies of today and see if they're anything like their predecessors. In this episode, we're going to take a look back at one of the most iconic characters from the funny pages to animation. I'm talking about a round, orange, wisecracking, rebellious... No, not that one. There we go. I'm going to talk about Heathcliff. Heathcliff started out as a comic strip in 1973 by American cartoonist George Gately. It wasn't long till Heathcliff became a huge success, published in over a thousand newspapers worldwide. In 1980, Ruby Spear production brought Heathcliff to life, making his first television debut on ABC called Heathcliff and Dingbat, starring Dingbat, a vampire dog, spare rib, and a pumpkin named Nobody. That's just the 80s, just go with it. In the second season, Dingbat and the gang were replaced by another comic strip character named Marmaduke, which the show was then renamed Heathcliff and Marmaduke. However, the show was cancelled due to Heathcliff being too nice and friendly, rather than being a pain in the... well, you get the idea. Two years after that, the production company Deke Entertainment took over and created the show that I grew up with. Heathcliff and the Cadillac Cats. There, his reputation of being a troublemaker was restored. Oh, and see if you remember this voice. If you can't outrun them, you can always outsmart them. Strategy. Yep, you guessed it. That voice is none other than the legendary voice actor Mel Blanc, the man of a thousand voices. Mel Blanc's voice is famous for several other iconic characters, such as Bugs Bunny and the Looney Tune Gang as well as Barney Rubble of the Flintstones and many more. Heathcliff was one of the last new voices before Mel's death in 1989. This new show featured a cast of alley cats led by Riff Raff, a get-rich-quick scheming cat. Pretty obvious there. Hector, a New Jersey talking cat who sometimes leads the group when Riff Raff isn't there. Wordsworth, a roller-skating, headphone-wearing cat who rhymes all the time. And Mongo, the brawn over brain of the group. The Cadillac cats got their name because of a red and white Cadillac in this show that would transform from a car into a boat or camper. That was one of my favorite things in the show. Now, Riff Raff is just as street smart as Heathcliff, but to me, he's more of a lover, not a fighter type of character. He has a girl named Cleo who lives in a music shop. Actually, she should be living in a dance hall, hence the leg warmers. Now, is it just me, or does Cleo remind you of a feline Jennifer Beale from Flashdance? I mean, check this out. That says it all. Out of all the characters in the show, Heathcliff, of course, is my favorite. Being the street smart cat that he is, he has two sides to him. At home, he's well behaved, loved, and adored by friends and family. On the streets, he's always causing mischief, knocking down garbage cans, stealing fish from markets, and spending his favorite pastime harassing the neighborhood, beating up cats and dogs that dare to challenge his superiority. Cause he's Heathcliff! He can do whatever he wants! You would think obedience school would correct his behavior. In fact, there was an episode where he was sent to obedience school. But instead, it just sharpened his skills. But hey, if I had a cat that could handle his own against anything, I'd let him do whatever he wants to. He really shows his affectionate side to a classy Persian cat named Sonia, who's easily wooed by his charms, despite his antics, because she knows he's a good guy. 
Now, I noticed that throughout the show, Heathcliff and Riff Raff have never been in an episode together. Most of the time, it's the trio we see hanging around with Heathcliff or Riff Raff. I'm sure there was a Heathcliff episode where Riff Raff was spotted in a crowd. See? There he is. But why wasn't there an episode where they worked together or fought against each other? The only time we actually get to see them together is at the ending credits where Riff Raff snatches his hat back from Heathcliff. I mean, they practically live in the same town. I'm sure they would have bumped into each other by now. But I guess having two alpha dogs or cats in the same place would have been too much for the neighborhood to handle. So, I guess there's a mutual respect between the two, so long as they don't cross each other's turf. But it would have been an epic episode. There was a Heathcliff movie back in 1986, but it was just a compilation of episodes, so I really wouldn't call it a movie. Overall, this show is fun to watch. I love the characters, the stories are hilarious, and it's just entertaining. If you haven't shown your kids this show, I'd recommend it. Thanks for watching! Let me know what you think! If you have any memorable moments of Heathcliff or a favorite episode, you can share by leaving a comment below. And make sure to come back and check out the next episode as I'll be talking about...